Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking two of the biggest stars here in Derby at the arena at the glorious Peter Pan. How are you both? Good. Yeah, very well, yeah, thank good you. Uh, we've just finished a show, that's why I've got <laughs> glitter. That's why I still look like a fairy in an old sweatshirt. Apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mustn't apologise. You've seen my face, Katrina. There's nothing to be embarrassed about here at all. Congratulations on this beautiful show. I mean, to put a show on on this scale in what is a velodrome, I mean, ten parts of the year, this has basically got bikes going around, and he yeah. turns it into this magnificent grand production. It's beautiful, yeah. isn't it, Bill? Yeah, Morgan's amazing. You know, he designs it, he writes it, he's the dame in it. He's a very, very talented bunny. And uh, yeah, yeah, he's terrific. I think it does matter now. Kids won't sit through nothing. And Panto has had to come to 2019 standards because they're looking at these iPads on the tippy-tappy all day and they want a show. And this looks so beautiful. And you look beautiful in it. I mean, they fly you, they have beautiful lighting, the scenery that's just off the scale. It does matter, doesn't it? Yeah, you've got to tick all those boxes. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, pe- for some people, this is their theatre trip of the yeah, year. Right. You know, so we, we owe it to them to deliver on everything in terms of visual spectacle and magic yeah. and scares and laughs and everything. So, yeah, we take it seriously. The last time I saw you was in the West End in Jamie, and there you were this year. And, of course, this is a huge production in the West End. And then you come here and they say, will you come to Derby to do panto? You must be nervous. I mean, it's interesting. Act two is more of a play than a panto, isn't it? And you really get to shine. Oh, well, that's very nice of you to say. <laughs> we're, we're in it, you see. We can't see it. We're in it. So you haven't got a clue, really. We do, yeah, he, he, wand- he gets a... Captain Hook gets a chance to wander around being a bit more unpleasant in the second half than he does in the first <laughs> half. So mostly, actually, to uh, Katrina's character. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, so it's great fun. Yeah. Is it fun being nasty than being sort of the camp old nonsense character in a play? I mean, what do you prefer doing? Because they always say getting the booze is more fun than sort of getting the titters. Yeah, it, 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 you know, all of the parts have their own skill set. And there is a skill set with a baddie where you need to scare people, but not too much. Mm. And, and also rem- to remember, I always think with baddies that they are, uh, sort of at the end of the day, pretty hopeless. Captain Hook has been chasing <laughs> Peter Pan for all of his life. He's never caught him. So why should he catch him on this particular day? Do you know what I mean? So, so I, I always think with, with baddies, there is an underlying level of incompetence that is really important. And, and, and if you've got that underneath the nastiness, then there are always a few laughs sort of there to be had, I think. And the opposite to that is you, who just comes on and be delicious for the whole show, and everybody <laughs> loves you. And, and that's, that's what the breakdown of the part said, was delicious. <laughs> and here's you worrying about your makeup. I don't know what's the problem. <laughs> what can I say? Why are you um, in costume? We would have loved that. <laughs> um, but the thing with Tinkerbell is, you know, she's she's I think she's a she's good at heart, mm. but she's never faced this feeling of oh jealousy and a bit of rivalry, and it doesn't bring the best out in her. So you know, we know we're sort of like it's fun and entertaining, but there's a story in there as well. You yeah. know, sometimes good people can behave badly and. The good thing is we learn our lesson in this and move on. Yeah, and there's a bit of redemption, isn't there, for her, Mm. you know, which is terrific. And again, when we see what you do in this, there is a fine line, isn't there, between it being sort of engaging and immersive but not being too scary because, I mean, there's four-year-olds sat next to you and then there's adults you've got to entertain and that's the trouble with Panto, getting that balance perfect. Yeah, I think that's right. I've got two kids myself, eight and five at the moment, the same age as, as the kids in this, actually. And, um, and you always sort of aim for what would, what would make them laugh, but just have them on the edge of not being sure whether to be scared or not, if you see what I mean. Yeah. So I, I sort of try and aim for that level. And, and also you can get quite a lot of cartoons, I think. I, I'm sort of aiming somewhere at... Um, uh, there's, there's a nasty character out of Go Jetters. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Available on CBS. <laughs> <laughs> We're on brand. Uh, yes, um, and uh, and I'm after I'm sort of after his kind of level of sort of trying to be extremely unpleasant, trying to get what he wants, trying to be bad, but at the end of the day, a little bit hopeless. 
What I loved about this show as well is the music in it. I mean, to fill an arena this size with a PA system and make it sound good is almost yeah. impossible. And they've done an amazing job. You can hear every word. But they've made this probably the most relevant and contemporary of all the pantos I've seen, the effort with the music being modern to again engage the kids. Because yeah. this is a brilliant way of doing it. Yeah, yeah and I think, I think it's important to have the, maybe a popular pop song in there for the kids to recognise. Mm. But during the kids' shows... Um, when I'm singing... Oh, my God, um, they sang along with you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it, was be- it was beautiful. Um, Don't you hate that when they ruin your moment singing oh, along? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Being very serious. But honestly, at one point, oh I, had my God, to, it was I had to, like, clutch my hands because it was so cute. I was oh, going to cry yeah. or giggle because it was this these little enduring yeah. voices joining yeah. in. It was yeah. wonderful. Ooh. And that's why I love it when they sing along. I love mm. it when they boo because they just want to let rip and have fun. And, and, and be involved, them. yeah. Yeah. I remember Matthew Kelly always says the best thing about showbiz is opening the cupboard and getting dressed up and, and putting the makeup on and all of that. For you, it's the ultimate role of that, really, isn't it? The flying, the wings, the costume, oh, the makeup. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, uh, I get to pro. I spend Tinkerbell so much fun because sometimes I play like uh, other fairies and you're generally being quite sweet and helpful. <laughs> it's fantastic fun to get like an amazing costume, getting to fly and then be really mean and silly. <laughs> and, and I, found, I found I'm getting like, more, it's funny you mentioned cartoons because mm. I think of that as well, especially in an arena, mm. the sort of physicality you have to take so that the people beyond the third and fourth row are getting the mm. same feeling of it. And I start, like, the shapes I'm making, mm. I'm really enjoying <laughs> that and being, like, a bit really silly, so I mm. love it. And your Tinkerbell's got a bit of sass as well, and she needs to have that, because, of course, little girls today aren't like little girls 50 years ago. They have got more energy, they have got more power, and they do mostly beat the men in the end. That's sort of the <laughs> point, isn't it? Well, yeah, there is that as well. You want... Um, kids to sort of see that well Peter's in charge Tinkerbell's has very much his right hand person um, but of course in the original story Tinkerbell's still not very nice she tries to shoot Wendy mm. out of the sky <laughs> tells everyone she's a Wendy bird so actually I don't try to kill Wendy which I think makes so that's progress. me really very pleasant that's always my favourite line in Panto, where they go, what should we do to our boys and girls go get her yeah, and you yeah, go no yeah. no no I this is that. Panto yeah. <laughs> And for you, you get to sing in this and you get to act in this. Is this a dream role for you? Because you get to shine. There's a bit of everything, really. Yeah. And you have a sense of humour, too. Yeah, I'd always wanted to have a go at Hook. I've never, never had a go at him. I've done Aladdin and Abanaza, who is, you know, also incompetent, which is great fun. Yeah. But I've never had a go at Hook. Because he is, this is his life's ambition, is to capture it, Pan, is to get his revenge for what he did to his arm. So there is a story in that. And, and so you've kind of, there is stuff to play over and above, and you know, the panto of it. So there is a story, there is a play in there, sort of lurking. And often, you know, Peter Pan is done as a Christmas show as opposed to a panto. So, you know, so there is a play in there. So, that, so there's good sort of solid acting stuff, but then there's also quite a bit of slapstick. And with, you know, Morgan and, and Richard, who play the dame and the parrot in this, you've got loads of that. And they always try and kind of trip us up and, and kind of make us giggle. And they pretty much always manage it. So you've got a bit of slapstick. You've got a bit of singing and dancing. You know, Hook gets his own sort of slightly ridiculous popular song himself. So, you know, it's all good stuff. And yeah, I love it. Is there anything compared to playing in town on Shaftesbury Avenue with having to get up at half past six in the morning to do a ten o'clock show? I mean, this, <laughs> this is proper work, isn't it? It's unique. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to do it again at two o'clock after you've done that. And then, yeah. and then again at five and eight. Yeah, yeah. But it's good. It's great. You get into a rhythm with Panto and it has an energy to it and it takes on its own momentum. And if you can keep that going, then, then you're in business. And the audience give you so much. And, and if you've got a good script, and we do, then the, the jokes bounce and they fire and you get loads back from the audience and, and, you know, it takes on its own momentum and it's great fun to do. And so many of these pantos are cut and paste and basically the same one in a different venue year after year. Yeah. He doesn't do that. And you can tell every line is so beautifully crafted. And there's some lovely in-gags as well, aren't they? Look at this cloth, isn't it wonderful? It needs a good iron and things like that. <laughs> playing with the adults, playing with the uh, audience and the kids. And that's beautiful here at Peter Pan. Congratulations to you both. It's a beautiful show. You can see it until the 5th of January. Fourth. Fourth. Saturday the 4th of January. Well, I've rebooked for the 5th. You'll have to carry on. <laughs> I'm not in. A command I'm, performance. We'll get, we'll I'm coming to the half past 7am show on that day. Here at Derby Arena at Peter Pan. Lovely to see you both. Thank you for your time. Thanks very Cheers. much. Cheers. Lovely to meet you.
Right.